Hello and welcome to my new video. This is the second part of my mastering vast mini tutorial about sampling. Hell, it's about time. Today I will show the way how I put the samples together into a key map and transfer them into the PC3K. This might also work for older Kurzweil samplers, but I have no experience with that. To make the samples work together all over the keyboard, you have to arrange them into a key map. This is a file that contains all the samples together with the information, where they have their root node and how far they should span over the keys until the next sample has its own zone. In a Kurzweil key map you can also adjust the level, tuning and transpose of individual samples. And you can build multiple layer key maps and adjust the velocity range of individual samples. But I will keep it simple and stick to the one layer key map that I planned from the beginning. All this work can be done with a PC3K as standalone workstation, but for convenience I will use the help of my computer. The Curse Filer from Mark Halbrügge. He offers this program on donation basis. I will put a link below. It can build key maps for older Kurzweil sampling synthesizers and it also works for the PC3K. For better visuals I set the look to Windows. The fonts are a bit bigger that way. And I set the language to English so you won't get confused by my strange German labeled buttons. To load our samples go to import and navigate to the folder with the samples. While holding the shift button you can select all individual samples at once and load them into the curse filer. Now we have our sample pool here inside this window. To arrange them into a key map we select them all and choose new instrument. A small window appears that asks you for the name of the key map you want to create and the name of a basic program that is created for this key map. The curse filer will save your work as a small pack that contains the key map and this simple and basic program that lets you play it on your PC3K. Now that we have names for both, have a look at your samples. You see the names of the individual samples and on the right we see the current root notes. They have to be set to the real root note of the sample. Right now the keymat does not know what note this sample represents. This is the reason why it was so important to give the samples a name that lets you identify it. Now you can set the root keys to the real key of that sample. You can do this one by one. If you have given names like I did, you can use a convenient function of the curse filer. It can guess the root key by the name of the sample. But to be sure, better check afterwards if everything is the way it should be. Now we are done and save the file. The curse filer has several options to save it. I choose the K2000 format, since it is really basic and can be loaded into the PC3K. This is the file. It contains the samples, the key map and the simple program. I put it onto a USB stick and transfer it to the PC3K. On the PC3K I choose load, go to the stick and select the file. I choose to append it to this user bank. It will be placed directly behind the last user program in that section. It will load fast because it is really small. 
Now we still have some work to do. The curse filer builds the key map and the root nodes, but does not define the zones that the samples should use. We have to do this job on the PC3K. Choose the program that came with the key map, hit edit, choose the key map and hit it again. Now you are a bit deeper in the guts of the PC3K. What we do now is tell the key zones what sample they should use, and not vice versa. If you try to choose a sample and then set a key zone, you will be confused, because changing the sample does not switch the key zone it uses. But choosing key zones switches current samples above, important to realize. Well, this took me some time of wondering. I start with the lowest key zone and work myself up to the highest one. Depending on what sampling rate you used, there is a different limit to which the sample can be transposed upwards. My plan was to use two samples per octave, so it's no problem and I don't reach those limits. Except with the highest note of the key map. On top you have the current sample of the map, below there is the current zone that is attached to it. Now you choose and define zones and attach the right sample to it. The current key zone in this key map currently has no sample attached to it. Doesn't matter, we scroll through the samples in the PC3K you will also see the ROM samples flying by. Luckily we have catchy names for our samples, so we know exactly where this belongs to. The key zone itself is nonsense right now. Let's set it to the range we planned. The A samples should roughly reach from F to B, the D samples from C to E. I do this zone by zone with all the samples and I always check on the keyboard what I hear. Things might become a bit confusing while you have transposed your keyboard. You might look at zones but play the different ones, so better to do this job with no transpose. After this is done, press exit to leave the key map, edit stage and save the key map. By the way, you have key map and even sample editing also with the hardwired samples of the PC3 line, something I find quite outstanding feature. Now you are back in the program edit and you can start to program a nice sound. I have done some programs for that key map now, let's check them out. As a supporter of the Mastering Vast forums, you can get that key map and programs for free. It contains several variations and effects that I've programmed for that. I personally like the phaser the most. Have fun!